So let me now move to the next item of uh, our agenda, uh, which is the debate on uh, the European Commission for 2021 work program and the first EU strategic foresight report. We have the opportunity to have with us Vice President Sefcovic, uh, and a great friend of uh, the Committee of the Regions. Dear Vice President, dear Maros, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here at the European Committee of the Regions today. Our institution and its members are the Commission's strongest allies, not only because we represent the democratic pillar of the Union, but also because we are its safety net and its best tool for reaching citizens. This is why we play a five-item role in the Better Regulation Toolkit. I particularly welcome your decision to include not only our members in the Feed for Future platform, but also the COR's Reg Hub network. We are fully committed to working to spot potential bottlenecks and achieve better legislation. We believe that only by fully implementing the recommendations on active subsidiarity will be able to achieve inclusive governance in the Union. Fully exploiting unexplored margins within the current treaty framework alongside improved interinstitutional agreement on better law can make a world of difference. So in this regard, I would like to ask you to ensure the rollout of tailored public consultations for local and regional authorities. This could be a particularly useful way of ensuring that the voice of national and European associations is heard when analyzing the Commission's priorities in its work program. Our common aim must be to involve regions and cities in permanent dialogue with the aim of introducing new European legislation, new policies, only if and when it is really needed. I'm also confident that we will work closely together on how to improve legislation during the Conference on the Future of Europe, a unique occasion to move forward a more inclusive union which is more in touch with its citizens. In October, we presented the first edition of our local and regional barometer, which provides an analysis of the resilience capacity of our cities and regions in the context of the, rural, of the current health, social and economic crisis. And resilience is indeed the new compass for EU policies. I mean, in this respect, I welcome you. Uh, I welcome your foresight report, which rightly focuses on resilience. Let me just stress one point: the EU cannot be more resilient without its cities and regions. I would therefore like to suggest that you apply a territorial approach when monitoring the green, digital and socio-economic dimensions of resilience. Regions and cities can help in the task of anticipating the future, since they have proved their ability to anticipate and manage locally many societal changes, coming up with practical solutions on the ground. Take, for example, the cities implementing and reaching goals in the fight against climate change, something they have achieved by Localizing the SDGs, the success story of ESPO in Finland comes to mind. Or the example of regions cooperating across borders on health-related issues. A good example of this is the hospital built through the European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation between Catalonia and Occitan. Take the example of rural or disadvantaged areas, which anticipated their needs for broadband with a view to tackling demographic challenges. I'm thinking of the mountainous areas of Thessaly in Greece, or those communities which worked for many years on the, in, on the integration of migrants from Altena in Germany to Sintra in Portugal or Merkel in Belgium. So there is plenty of room for cooperation, and I see a possible convergence between your foresight report and, your, and our barometer that we presented one, two months ago. The next step should therefore be working together. Cities, regions and the networks working on resilience are ready to map the challenges and the territorial risks, and they can promote projects which build resilience at the local and regional level. I hope that our barometer and our territorial impact assessments can be used to help include the territorial dimension in the analysis of green socioeconomic resilience. Regions and cities can anticipate new emerging challenges. These include 
the quality of democracy and the concept of well-being in our communities, something that goes well beyond GDP. So let's work in partnership. And I'm definitely, I'm certain that we will develop together the most efficient and inclusive European policies for a better future. Dear Commissioner, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, dear President, dear Apostolos, uh, dear members, and uh, very much appreciate uh, your introduction when you covered the most uh, important points, but also extended your hand uh, towards uh, cooperation with the European Commission, with me, and also with our uh, foresight uh, expert and the network we are currently building on. First and foremost, I have to say that I'm uh, delighted to be here, that it's a pleasure to, to address uh, yet again uh, the Committee of Regions. My only apology is that I would need to leave around uh, 1620 because, as you know, you have impeccable timing for your committee session because this is indeed extremely crucial week. Our leaders uh, started the discussion on how to make sure that uh, Europe would be uh, climate neutral by 2050, that we would have uh, adequate financing for the next uh, seven years, be it in form of uh, our next uh, multi-annual financial framework or the next generation EU instruments, which would be crucial for the future. And I presume that uh, Commission's President Ursula von der Leyen will debrief uh, her colleagues, her peers, about yesterday yesterday's discussion with the uh, British uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson. And of course, uh, these are the last uh, days uh, of the 2020, which is a very difficult year for, for everyone. So I'm sure that you understand that all of us are really using every single minute uh, to deliver on uh, what we promised uh, we do uh, for the European citizens and to complete uh, our tasks. I think, uh, that when we look uh, at uh, 2020, it was the year full of uh, challenges, and one uh, which really struck us with uh, relentless uh, force. Uh, and uh, I don't think that there is any family uh, in Europe which was not affected by COVID-19, be it uh, from the perspective of uh, health uh, or economic downturn or social consequences, which unfortunately always uh, follow the, the economic downturn uh, created by such an uh, important crisis like the euro was uh, going through. What was very important was that uh, we have seen in uh, this crisis also new opportunities. And I think that, uh, that uh, strong, uh, unbreakable, unbreakable unity uh, of the European member states showed so early on after the crisis started, uh, brought us, um, I would say, to the, uh, to, the, to the fringe, to the border of what might be the new chapter in uh, European uh, history. We are about to embark upon a new era where we will have uh, enormous financial means uh, to kickstart of our economy. We are working very hard to be much stronger uh, in the areas like health by building health unions so we can be better prepared for future pandemics. And we are also using foresight in a new ways uh, which allow us, like we announced, for example, today, to make sure that uh, Europe uh, uh, would be technological leader, not only today, but also in the future, because I had the pleasure today to present uh, to the public our new uh, European battery regulation, which sets the new global golden standard for the most sustainable, the, the most performant and most socially responsible products, uh, uh, which would be placed on the European uh, market by the manufacturers, I believe, from around the world, but especially uh, from Europe. Of course, for all that uh, to happen, we have to be successful, not only in the summit, but in our close cooperation, and also, in a way, how we are going to uh, make sure that 
local, city and regional authorities are not only properly heard, but properly involved in our decision-making. And it would be absolutely crucial in uh, preparation of uh, the recovery plans, uh, which the European Commission is currently uh, discussing with uh, all uh, 27 member states. I would say that uh, we are at a different level of the preparedness if it comes uh, from the country to the country. Some member states uh, are progressing on sector by sector basis. Other uh, governments decided to present uh, the, the comprehensive recovery plan. But what we are always uh, highlighting and, uh, and, uh, and underlining is the importance that these recovery plans would have uh, the, the societal support so that they would be result of inclusive consultations discussions where of course where of course regional and local and city authorities should be always uh, part of as you know we would like to conclude uh, our work uh, uh, with our member states on uh, the recovery plans by march april of the next year so we can quickly start to execute them and make sure that this next generation EU, the 750 billion euros, uh, which would be channeled uh, in the direction of kick-starting the, the post-COVID uh, uh, economy, would be properly used and could be uh, and could be uh, really channeled to our member states uh, as quickly as possible. Our Commission work program for 2021 was also aimed uh, to achieve uh, uh, these precise uh, results how to stay uh, conform with the key priorities uh, of the political guidelines of our presidents uh, uh, upon which we got uh, the vote of confidence from the European Parliament, but also how to react uh, on the new lessons learned uh, from COVID-19 crisis and prepared for the better. Therefore, uh, we put as a headline goal in our commission work program for 2021 as a restoration of new vitality that we have to move uh, in the next year from the strategies uh, to delivery and that we have to focus much more on the future-proof uh, solutions across the, the whole uh, policy areas. And I know that you've been also debating our programs in a greater detail and that you would have a vote on how you perceive the Commission work program for the next year. And I know that uh, results of the vote uh, would be known uh, just uh, after the conclusion of our discussion. And I really would like to thank you for your input, for your contribution, which was uh, very important for us. And we've been, of course, extremely pleased that to a great extent uh, it uh, well uh, corresponded with our main focal points for the next year. How to make sure that this uh, uh, twin digital and um, green uh, transition would be further supported by strong uh, s uh, strength and resilience uh, of our economy. How to make uh, sure that uh, uh, we will be uh, that we will be acting in uh, more fair global uh, market conditions for our businesses and uh, industries, and how we would increase our strategic autonomy and, and uh, become less dependent on individual suppliers of, of goods or raw materials and i think this uh, we felt very clearly during the first months of the crisis uh, in the case of uh, medicines medicaments and uh, uh, protective equipment uh, for our health uh, professionals and of course uh, europe would continue to lead uh, the world in tackling the the, the climate change and uh, and uh, uh, making sure that we would be looking for closer and closer allies in that endeavor. And of course, we have high hopes that the new American administrations will, will again rejoin our effort, not only to implement the Paris Agreement, but to be very clear that we want uh, to be climate neutral by mid-centuries to leave the, the, the planet uh, in much better state for the next generation as it is uh, uh, right now. And therefore, we very much uh, appreciate uh, your July resolution, which provided us with a comprehensive overview of uh, identified uh, uh, priorities and also 
uh, we, were, we, we value a lot uh, your 2020 barometer of regions and cities because it provides a wealth of information from the regional and local perspective and also I think it reflected very well the pandemic and economic effects and consequences uh, in different uh, regions of Europe. And I know how much it was appreciated by our president, Ursula von der Leyen, who also intervened at the occasion when you've been presenting the results uh, of uh, the 2020 barometer. And I agree with you that it's excellent ground for our closer cooperation in the field of foresight. As you know, uh, this year we presented first ever strategic foresight report, and I think it was very logically focused on resilience because uh, this was uh, the, the, the key uh, conclusion from the first uh, six months of this year that Europe shouldn't be only green and digital, but also very resilient. And therefore, we wanted to make sure that uh, in the future, which definitely will not be less disruptive, we need to have better foresight where we would uh, anticipate what might come, would explore the different uh, possibilities, uh, how to adjust our actions to these new challenges, but more importantly and ultimately by acting in a collaborative manner, because I think that, that action upon foresight makes the foresight strategic. Not only to know and foresee what happens, but to take strategic action uh, to make sure that uh, we will take the best lessons uh, from all the insights our foresight experts are, are bringing to our uh, political table. And I think this was also very well highlighted in your annual regional and local uh, barometer report, which, uh, as I was referring to, was very much welcomed by the uh, European Commission. We've been looking at uh, the resilience in our foresight report from the different uh, perspective that until now. So we've been really uh, looking at uh, Europe uh, from, as we call it, four quadrants, from the geopolitical perspective, but also from the green, digital, and socio-economic uh, uh, aspects of uh, the resilience. We wanted to highlight where we are vulnerable uh, but also where we, where we have capacities to act and what are the uh, most important opportunities uh, in uh, uh, this respect. And it was quite clear that we would need to focus even more of our analytical work on the future of jobs, because we see that uh, the, the shifts on the labor market are systemic and uh, they will only accelerate and we would need uh, as well as low tech but especially high-tech uh, uh, skills, uh, which we would have to evolve over the time and we would have to uh, provide uh, adequate assistance uh, to our citizens and to our workers to be well-equipped uh, from the perspective of the, of the skills, from the perspective of, of uh, uh, the uh, uh, knowledge uh, to be up to these challenges which this new labor market is uh, uh, bringing to us. And therefore, education and training uh, would be one of the key priorities uh, for the future. As I alluded uh, in my, uh, at the beginning of my remarks today, we adopted a new European battery regulation. And that's just clear proof that uh, how can we change uh, uh, the tide within a very short period of time. Three years ago, uh, Europe was not existent on the global battery map. Today, uh, we are the hot zone for the investments uh, Last year and uh, this year, uh, the investment has been three times uh, and this year two times higher than in China. Uh, we clearly uh, have become uh, the number one destination for the investment into this sector. And as of 2025, we will be able to produce that many uh, batteries which would completely cover the needs of European market and we would become exporters. We need invest, we have investments. We have uh, demand uh, and we have uh, right, uh, right policy framework to do that. What is the missing element? What we hear from our industry and missing element is to have adequately trained people with the necessary skills and specializations. And I think this is just a, a kind of guiding principle which is uh, opening up uh, very often when we are talking about the future and the new technologies, how to prepare our workforce for these new challenges. Uh, of uh, the future. 
As you know, dear uh, Apostolos, we are working very closely uh, with the Committee of uh, Regions, also within our ESPAS network. For those who don't know, ESPAS is the abbreviation for the European Strategic Policy Analysis System, where all the EU institutions are working on foresight, and the contribution from the Committee of Regions is always very much welcome and very important. If you allow me, uh, last two uh, uh, topics I would like to cover. One is the better regulation, because there we have already established very practical cooperation um, uh, with your reg hub, which, uh, which are the regional hubs who are helping us a lot uh, to look where we can cut further the red tape, how we can reduce the administrative burden, how can we be better in making sure that uh, our uh, regulation is efficient, is not burdensome, and it's uh, fine-tuned also to the needs, to the SMEs, who are the backbone of the European uh, economy. And we also listen carefully to your suggestions how to improve and update our Have Your Say web portal, which is uh, uh, revamped, uh, renewed, uh, more user-friendly, and I hope that it would also attract uh, many more contributions uh, from the stakeholders uh, uh, to tell us what they would like to see uh, in uh, these proposals we put up for the consultations, or also what they uh, what they don't like, or what they think we should uh, improve uh, in uh, the propositions which we are tabling uh, for the public uh, uh, consultations. And uh, uh, as you know, we've been transforming our Refit uh, platform of the past uh, to the new platform Fit for Future. Uh, I had the honor to, to launch it a couple of weeks ago, and I'm very glad that we have three members, three representatives in a governmental uh, group uh, coming from the committee regions. These are very respected members, chairs of uh, the three specialized uh, commissions of uh, uh, the committee of regions, and we are very pleased about their active uh, participation. And the last word about how to how to involve our citizens uh, better into the uh, discussions about the future. I can assure you that we in the Commission are eagerly awaiting the start uh, of uh, the conference on, on future of Europe. Uh, I think that we are almost there. We just have to settle one particular issue and then we can start. Of course, I'm sure that because of pandemia, until uh, we would have a proper vaccination rates, uh, we will most probably start in this hybrid form, and we will be using digital and online means to talk to our citizens, but I think that all of us are very eager uh, uh, for the physical contacts, for the real meetings uh, with our citizens, and I'm sure that the Committee of the Regions and all your members uh, will be very eager to help us uh, 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 to meet uh, the citizens, to listen uh, to the concerns, worries, and the suggestions. So I am very much looking forward to that, but also to your questions and answers. And as I said, my uh, only apology is that I would need to leave in, uh, in, in 20 minutes. So thank you very much. So once again, uh, uh, dear President, for your kind invitation, your kind words at the beginning, and now I'm listening to your comments and remarks. Thank you very much, Vice President. Um, for your remarks, very interesting remarks, and I think um, you really uh, explained and described uh, all of your targets and, and your vision, basically. Um, since you have to leave in 20 minutes, I would suggest that I give the floor to our members for about 15 minutes in total, and then uh, I give you the floor for your final reaction. Um, let's uh, start with uh, the political groups first. Olga Gebrevich for four minutes, but please uh, be the quickest, uh, the shortest possible in your statements, uh, colleagues. Olga, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Dear Vice President, Sefcovic, on behalf of the EPP uh, group, I would like to welcome you to our plenary session and thank you for uh, for very interesting intervention. One year since the start of the 
von der Leyen Commission. It is safe to say that it has been the most challenging beginning of the Commission mandate in the recent times. Uh, the Commission continues to play the crucial role in the coordinating the res response of the member state in the pandemic, as well as the uh, union recovery. At the same time, local and regional authorities have been at the front line protecting EU citizens from the consequences of the pandemic. Next year will be a crucial in uh, proving that right solutions for a resilient recovery and preparedness for the future. The 2021 work program sets the framework uh, for the better uh, to happen uh, in a sufficient manner. The first EU strategic foresight report which uh, focuses on resilience is a new process which uh, is welcomed and if implemented properly will be uh, of added value uh, for equality uh, of EU policies. Uh, simultaneously, we uh, need to explain what we are doing for the citizens by taking them on board and taking on board them their views. Uh, as part of this, it is now the more important than ever to start the debate on the Conference on the Future of Europe. Uh, the issues raised during the last year can be only managed by, uh, if everyone has their say. De de dear uh, Vice President, the crucial element uh, for the success of uh, all above uh, will be uh, an uh, improved coordination and solidarity between all levels of governments in the European Union. This will ensure proper implementation of uh, new policies as well as coherent and efficient responses to the health crisis in this. And in this respect, the contribution of regional and local authorities must be an integral part of design and implementation of resilience and recovery plans. This means nothing more and nothing less than the full application of active subsidiarity and partnership uh, principles. I would like to give you one example. The comprehensive plan uh, for European Health Union announced by President von der Leyen as a response uh, to the health crisis is essential in strengthening the capacities and preparedness of uh, member states' health systems. Many regions in the EU, including my uh, West Pomeranian region in Poland, have significant responsibilities in uh, the field of public health, such as management of the hospitalities and care facilities, as well as the, the design of health prevention strategies. It is therefore essential to involve regional and local authorities in preparing of the European response to serious health threats, including cross-border threats. Possession of this knowledge in healthcare should not be overlooked. Reg local and regional authorities have the figures to highlight regional di differences and inequalities. Uh, an example of this knowledge is the data and analysis uh, provided in the CORs annual regional and ro local barometer. Uh, all of this above can contribute significantly to the strategic foresight report on elements such as the analysis of health, uh, vulner vulnerabilities, uh, Thank you. The social and uh, economic dimension. Thank you very much, Mr. Vi Vice President, uh, for your very interesting intervention. Thank you very much. I'll get the floor now to Karl Hans Lamberts, please. Monsieur le Vice President, uh, Cher Maros, c'est un véritable plaisir de vous retrouver à nouveau parmi nous et de constater que votre engagement à renforcer les liens entre nos institutions reste intact comme il a été déjà depuis de si nombreuses années. Notre résolution sur le programme de travail de la Commission est marquée par deux grands défis. La crise sanitaire, la lutte contre le réchauffement climatique. Les enjeux sanitaires sont nombreux et colossaux. Et la dimension transfrontalière s'est avérée extrêmement sensible. À cet égard, je salue tout particulièrement les initiatives annoncées par la Commission pour le second semestre 2021. 
pas question que la pandémie fasse reculer les enjeux climatiques au second rang, ni en termes de priorité, ni en termes d'investissement. Pour le groupe socialiste, ces deux objectifs ne doivent cependant pas occulter les besoins sociaux qui en découlent ou qui existent par ailleurs. Pour cette raison, nous soutenons pleinement les initiatives de la Commission pour la protection des travailleurs des plateformes numériques et pour un nouveau plan d'action sur le socle commun des droits sociaux. Nous souhaitons également que la Commission saisisse l'opportunité de son initiative sur la vague de rénovation pour accorder la priorité au logement abordable. Nous appelons également de nos voeux le lancement d'une réflexion sur un régime européen de réassurance chômage ou encore sur l'égalité salariale entre les hommes et les femmes. Par ailleurs, permettez-moi en tant que président du réseau Subsidiarité d'insister tout particulièrement sur la nécessité d'un suivi pertinent pour les recommandations de la Task Force Subsidiarité à laquelle le comité des régions avait contribué activement en 2018 et qui avait inventé la notion de subsidiarité active. Je tiens à ce titre à vous remercier très chaleureusement d'avoir associé le comité des régions et son initiative Regional Hubs aux travaux de la plateforme Fit for Future. Je voudrais conclure avec quelques remarques au sujet de votre rapport sur la prospective. Cette démarche concerne les collectivités territoriales d'une double manière. D'une part, l'action sur le terrain a vraiment besoin de perspectives à long terme basées sur une analyse approfondie des tendances futures. D'autre part, les exercices de prospective gagnent beaucoup à s'inspirer des situations et enjeux concrets sur le terrain. C'est d'ailleurs pas un hasard si le comité des régions participe depuis le début activement aux travaux du groupe interinstitutionnel Espace et s'il a décidé récemment de renforcer sa capacité d'action en matière de prospective. Nous ne pouvons que nous réjouir de ce que l'actuelle commission accorde une importance toute particulière à la thématique de la prospective et compte l'utiliser comme un véritable instrument de travail opérationnel focalisé sur la résilience. Comme pilote de cette action, je vous souhaite, cher vice-président, beaucoup de succès et la persévérance nécessaire pour mener l'expérience jusqu'au bout. Comme le mentionne d'ailleurs très justement le dernier document d'espace sur les tendances 2030, la prospective ne remplace jamais le futur, mais elle nous aide utilement à ne pas perdre de vue nos objectifs stratégiques et à ne, et à ne pas nous égarer trop souvent dans des voies sans issue. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci beaucoup. The floor now to uh, Ulrika Landergren for three minutes, please. Tack, herr ordförande, eh, och varmt välkomna till, dig, till er, vice ordförande Sefcovic, på Renew Europe's gruppens vägnar. Jag är lokalpolitiker från Kungsbacka i Västsverige och jag har med intresse följt presentationen av kommissionens strategiska framtidsrapport 2020. Och jag vill också tacka för när vi såg senast på Fit for Future eh, plenaren. Eh, jag tror att vi kan utveckla, utveckla mycket tillsammans. Men jag vill gärna presentera lite hur vi strategiskt tänker i vårt regionala utvecklingsarbete i Sverige. Alla regionala utvecklings eh, Planer eh, arbetar nu in Agenda 2030 med de 17 globala målen. Och det innebär också att vi, hur vi ska jobba med för att åstadkomma det du också nu lyfter som så tydligt. Hur kan vi skapa en ökad res resiliens? Eh, våra strategier är att i första hand att bygga kompetens. Vi behöver nu utbilda stora delar av vår befolkning, inte bara våra ungdomar, för bättre kompetensförsörjning och ett livslångt lärande. Vi behöver öka den digitala kompetensen. 
Eh, I Västsverige där vi har en, en stor fordonsindustri så behöver vi jobba både med eh, kunskaper kring batteri och batteriutveckling, elektrifiering, utökade teknikutbildningar men också den gröna omställningen. Att jobba med stärkta innovationskraft för konkurrenskraftigt näringsliv i framkant men också för en hållbar tillväxt. Vi jobbar på att utveckla välfärdsteknik och där vill jag lyfta ett exempel som heter All Age Hub. Där kommunen samverkar med akademin, näringsliv och civilsamhället och arbetar för att utveckla utmanings- och behovsdriven innovation väldigt mycket till hela vår äldreomsorg. Knyta samman Västsverige är ett hållbart förbättrat tillgänglighet med utbyggd kollektivtrafik och tillgång till bredband. För alla som borde idag vara en självklarhet. Att också jobba med det som jag tror är vår stora utmaning, ökad inkludering för tillit och sammanhållning, en demokratiutveckling och en integration där stad och landsbygd och framförallt att öka invånarnas delaktighet och inflytande. Vi behöver jobba mer med cirkulära affärsmodeller och vi behöver experimentera mer och experimentera för att lära och skala upp och implementera, testa och tillåta testbädder inom offentlig sektor. Ja, det finns oerhört mycket spännande att göra och jag ser verkligen fram emot det fortsatta arbetet med er, Sevkovic, eh, också i den fortsatta eh, dialogen. Tack! Thank you very much. Rob Jonkman, please. Thank you, Chair, uh, dear Vice President uh, Sefcovic. Uh, due to the lack of time, I will skip a, a part of my contribution. Um, climate change is an undeniable threat, and something needs to be done to address these issues. But who could have predicted that COVID-19 would also make a ruthless appearance in 2020 and in its path of destruction cause one of the greatest economic fallouts the world has ever experienced. So my first question is, uh, what should take uh, precedence now when revenue losses of EU companies are estimated in the range of 13 to 24 percent of the EU GDP? Ensuring a swift recovery from the pandemic that has inflicted hardship in every single EU, EU region or pushing through the costly climate laws that take center stage in the Commission's work program 2021. Speaking about better regulation, you mentioned it. Um, it is high time for burden reduction at EU level and launching the one-in, one-out approach. My ECR political group has been calling for it for many years, and we feel that these calls have finally been listened to. People and businesses, but also local and regional authorities, must see that the EU is capable of not only adding regulations, but also relieving them from the administrative burden. To make this a reality, the one-in, one-out principle will need to be applied coherently in all policy domains and for all EU legislation. Can you therefore confirm, Vice President, that this is indeed the intention of the European Commission? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kieran McCarthy, please. Yeah, thanks, Mr. President. Uh, dear Commissioner, thanks for your attendance. And can I say, first of all, as an Irish citizen, uh, thank you very much for your work on the withdrawal agreement in Northern Ireland this week. Um, on behalf of the European Alliance, uh, we are happy to see that the EU strategic foresight agenda will address um, cross-cutting topics and also the big topic of resilience, which I was very happy to hear you mention that word, um, because too often... Um, Local and regional authorities um, are not involved, or they're not, they don't get allocated the resources they need from um, their central governments. Um, so I do think that the recovery fund um, is a golden opportunity, um, especially as local and regional authorities uh, come under severe um, financial pressure from COVID. Um, the recommendations of the subsidiarity task force, um, which you worked on with us um, in the past two or three years, need to be continued to be pursued. Um, 
and also best practice um, projects need to be pursued as well. Um, so, for example, urban mobility and, uh, and future strategies around that topic could be a new case uh, for a new approach of active, on active subsidiarity. Uh, one could tap the potential of the EU urban agenda and the expertise of their partnerships um, on better cooperation, better funding um, and better regulation. Um, it is necessary to bring on board um, local and regional enterprise uh, and the return of experience um, from local local regional authorities um, and how they prepare, deliver and implement uh, key initiatives um, in our cities, our regions, our towns. Um, and the CUR is working on fantastic um, flagships for next year, um, recovery and resilience facility, the facility, um, health-related COVID-19 responses, um, action plans for the implementation of the European Pillar of Social Rights, um, CUR for, for uh, climate pact and um, the future cross-border cooperation, migration, integration, the vision for rural areas, the topics go on. So let us grasp the opportunity by keeping working together more and learning and scaling up um, from our successful cooperation and multi-level governance partnerships that actually exist. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Bern Vos, please. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Vielen Dank, Herr Kommissar. Es ist eine Zeit großer Herausforderung. Mehrere Krisen müssen zusammen gemanagt werden. Und von daher ist der Ansatz, eine strategische Vorausschau dann auch zu machen, richtig und gut. Und wir dürfen beim Wiederaufbau nicht die Fehler der Finanzkrise vor zehn Jahren wiederholen und wichtige Schritte und damit Jahre hin zu einer Transformation der Wirtschaft zu verspielen. Wir begrüßen es außerordentlich, dass die Kommission unter Frau von der Leyen äh, beginnt, in diesem Maße zu reagieren, um den Planeten bewohnbar zu halten. Ja, und wir müssen auch vom Ehrgeiz zum Handeln übergehen. Das Arbeitsprogramm der Kommission für 2021 ist getragen von vielen Vorhaben des Europäischen Green Deals als Wachstumsstrategie. Und ich möchte auch darauf hinweisen, es ist ein großer Schritt, von 40 auf 55 Prozent Reduktion des Treibhausgases als Ziel zu gehen. Das ist eine große Herausforderung für uns alle. Aber das Parlament ist bereits bei 60 Prozent, hat es beschlossen. Und die UNE wird noch in dieser Woche bekannt geben, dass wir beim bisherigen Ehrgeiz seit Beschluss der Pariser Ziele bei 3,1 Grad in 2050 landen. Ich glaube, das macht deutlich, dass wir handeln müssen. Und wir brauchen... Ausbau erneuerbaren Energien, kurzfristig und schnell. Und wir brauchen, und das haben wir auch in unserem Beschluss zum Arbeitsprogramm mit reingeschrieben, äh, wir brauchen auch eine GAP, die wirklich den Zielen des Green Deals gerecht wird und auch Fonds, mehr Fonds, die den Kommunen und Regionen direkt zur Verfügung stellen, um schneller umsetzen zu können. Ich möchte ein ganz anderes Thema jetzt noch mal ansprechen, das wir auch in unserem Beschluss zum Arbeitsprogramm der Kommission haben. Und das ist die Minderheitenpolitik, das ist MSPI, das muss jetzt umgesetzt werden. Über 1,3 Millionen Menschen in Europa haben das unterstützt. Und ich glaube, es wäre gut, wenn die Kommission das aktiv aufgreifen könnte. Meine Zeit läuft hier jetzt ab. Vielen, vielen Dank, dass Danke. Sie da sind und wir unterstützen Danke. Ihre Arbeit voll. Last but not least, uh, our first Vice President, uh, Vasco Cordeiro, please. Thank you, uh, President. Dear Vice President of the Commission, the Strategic Foresight Report aims to build collective intelligence in a structured manner to better chart the way forward for the twin green and digital transitions and to recover from disruption. I just quoted. To do this and to achieve better results, we have to set up a better way of working. How? Well, you've said it in your introduction, and I quote, local and regional authorities properly involved in policy making, you said. I couldn't agree more. I come from the Azores, an outermost region of Portugal in the middle of the Atlantic, in every corner of the Union, including the outermost regions. The COVID-19 crisis had a strong impact in all sectors. We for the sake of results and for the sake of the people we serve, there is an unsurmountable and unaddressed need to make local and regional authorities part of the decision-making process and to contribute to the solutions. 
we still feel left aside when it comes to EU policies. I ask you to support the way of working put forward by the former EU Commission, promoted with the Committee of the Regions within the Task Force on Subsidiarity in 2018, just like Karl Heinz Lambert, Karl Heinz Lambert and Kieran McCarthy pointed out. So, dear Vice President, let me finish this intervention by saying that this COVID crisis reminds us also how important social and economic region are. The Portuguese presidency will put an emphasis on the social dimension of the EU. We should all strongly support that to achieve changes to improve our citizens' lives. The Committee of the Regions will play an active role in the conference ahead of the Social Summit in Porto in 2021, and we look forward to the action plan for the European Pillar of Social Rights. Thank you. Thank you, Vasco. Uh, unfortunately, dear colleagues, since the Vice President needs to leave earlier than what was initially uh, foreseen, um, I will ask you to send us uh, all your inputs and we will uh, forward them to the Vice President. Uh, all of you who did not manage to speak, please send us your inputs and we will send them to the Vice President. So, Vice President Sefcovic, since you, you have to leave shortly, please I give you the floor for your final remarks. Thank, thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> dear President. Uh, uh, I am really very sorry that uh, today we are operating under such a time pressure, but I really would like to wholeheartedly thank all the honorable members of the Committee of Regions for the inputs, comments, and also su suggestions. On uh, Mr. Geblevich uh, uh, from Poland, uh, he rightly pointed out that uh, we should develop further our close cooperation on uh, the foresight, and he was also making reference to the dashboards uh, which we really want to use as a as a tool for monitoring how we are building resilience uh, across the board in our EU member states and I'm sure that we can use a lot of data from uh, uh, from your barometer and it would be very useful for making sure that this tool is precise fine-tuned and useful for the future on the health union here I think we very clearly heard the, the calls coming from the European citizens that they wanted Europe more united, better coordinated and more efficient and uh, action driven if it comes to tackling pandemia. And I think that uh, the clear demonstrations uh, uh, how much we can do together is uh, showing today where we have actually more vaccines than we need and we are ready uh, to, to share them uh, with our neighbours, uh, uh, be it in Western Balkans or to the east uh, of uh, our borders, and I know uh, from the contacts with the health ministers uh, that these negotiations with the produce, uh, producers, with very often very crafty and assertive uh, lawyers, wouldn't be very easy for smaller, medium-sized countries. And therefore, we want to strengthen our health union and make sure that we do it uh, within the current treaties, uh, and that we would use uh, the increased. Uh, uh, competencies uh, and uh, support for our agencies, be it for medicines or prevention of disease, and establish new agency, HERA, which would be working on advanced uh, biomedicine research to make sure that we, we would have uh, good resources if uh, another uh, pandemia would appear on European shores. To dear Kyle Heinz, uh, to Mr. Lambert, I just would like to say that it was a pleasure to work with you together for many years. Uh, we are, of course, very focused on developing further social pillars. The platform workers' conditions are on, uh, not only on our radar screen, but also in our program. And uh, I hear you loud and clear on the territorial aspects, uh, because I think you put it very eloquently, and uh, several members of the committee have been making reference to that as well. And I think that sure that help have uh, that assistance to make sure that uh, we would provide the member states uh, the financial means uh, uh, for the people not to lose their jobs was very welcome one. And I believe that this is also ingredient of something bigger uh, and even more efficient coming uh, to the future. To Madam Landregren from Sweden, thank you very much for your contribution and for the way in which we can learn 
from Sweden and Nordic countries how to introduce lifelong learning, how to adjust the curricula in our universities to make sure that uh, our uh, factories uh, working on the future technologies would have, uh, as until today, the best uh, uh, high qualified worker workforce on this planet. And we know that this need uh, permanent attention and good work with the educational establishment. To the Mr. Uh, Jonkman, Rope and Mr. Ben was, I would respond at the same time because uh, uh, I don't think that we are standing in front of the dilemma to, to help the economy or to tackle climate change. I think that by investing into the uh, right policies and into the technologies of the future, we are actually um, we are actually starting and accelerating this new green growth for European Commission. The green uh, policies are the growth policies as well. We see how many jobs have been created in the green sectors and how the future-oriented uh, companies are uh, thriving despite the COVID-19 and, and the difficulties. So we want to bring a lot of financial resources, but to invest them into the future-oriented uh, uh, economic uh, sectors. To Mr. McCarthy, I'm uh, uh, very glad that we managed to find uh, the good solution with the Chancellor Go um, on Monday, very late in the evening, which we are now formalizing and finalizing on uh, the proper and timely implementation of the withdrawal agreement. I'm glad that we agreed, we resolved all the problems, and therefore I'm confident that as of 1st of uh, January, the withdrawal uh, would be as it was agreed upon in the treaty, which is, I think, the best possible news uh, uh, for the people in Ireland and Northern Ireland, but also for the peace and prosperity on the island uh, of Ireland. And uh, to uh, Mr. Wars, the last part of my answer, uh, which I would combine also to Mr. Cordero Porto. We very much want to include your insights uh, on active subsidiarity, inclusion of regions and local authorities into our Fit for Future platform. There are three representatives of the Committee of Regions. I know that these are highly competent people, so hopefully they can come across and tell us what to do better. And we also are going to work very, very closely with uh, your uh, reg, reg hub expertise. And um, the last sentence uh, would go to Porto. All of us are looking forward to come to your social summit to the beautiful city of Porto, hopefully in physical presence. And I'm sure that it will be a beautiful time. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, thank you, dear Apostolos. Now I really have to run because I'm already late. So thanks a lot and bye-bye. Thank you very much, Vice President. Um, dear colleagues, uh, we end this uh, very interesting debate at this point. Uh, after all, with Vice President Sevšovic, we will have the opportunity to discuss again very soon. I'm sure about that. He's a very good friend of the Committee of the Regions, and uh, we have great things to do together. Uh, so thank you all for participating.